Hi, welcome to a quick video on uh, working out uh, alloy percentages uh, when you're doing bullet casting. Now today I'm just going to do some quick casting. I'm casting for my 310 Cadet rifle. Um, so uh, in my 310 Cadet I use uh, pure t uh, lead, sorry, pure lead. And then I just add 2% tin, uh, just to, it helps to fill the mould out, apparently. Um, so I don't use any wheel weight, so there's no antimony, so these are very soft bullets. So I'm only driving them about maximum about 1,200 feet per second, so I don't get any leading. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to work out how to work out an al alloy. So what I've done here is these ingots here. It's a, I have them all in a pile outside because I've got hundreds and hundreds of them. Now, oh, and there's a few 22 bullets there as well, which are also virtually pure lead. They're just ones that I pulled during another episode, uh, video when I was just uh, trying to work out whether um, cases would fire or not. Now, um, this has actually switched itself off now, the scale, by the time I got my uh, phone out to start, um, start filming. But um, on here, there's 2,880 grams of lead. Now, um, this scale only goes up to three kilos. And it just so happens that if I, I've, I've worked out in the past, if I, if I make up about three kilos of uh, lead ingots, um, that will almost fill my little uh, Lyman um, lead pot. So it actually works out quite well. All right. So we've got 2,880 grams of, um, of lead there. Now what I want is I want my final lead alloy to be 2% tin. Um, now I haven't got the tin out yet, so I'll just switch off and I'll show you that. Now there's two ways that you can, um, you can buy, easily buy tin. Um, now, in the old days, what I used to do was buy what's called 50-50 bar solder, which was sticks of solder. Um, actually, oh, the, this is pr pretty much what they look like, even though these are pure tin. Uh, it was a stick of solder that sort of looked about like that. They're generally 500 grams, or in the US, they're probably a pound, I would say. Um, and they were 50% lead, 50% tin by weight. Now, They've virtually not used anymore, that sort of thing, because they used to use them for all sorts of things, but uh, which have been superseded. Um, and I used to buy them, they used to have them at the hardware store, and they were reasonably priced. But the last time I went to buy some, uh, I went into actual an, a welding soldering supplies shop, big big one, uh, and said I wanted some 50-50 bar solder. And um, the um, person in there looked at me like I was from Mars. They didn't know what I was talking about. When I explained it to them, they had to ask the supervisor and they said, oh yeah, yeah, we can get that. Uh, and they had to order it in and it took a week. And then when it finally came, it was like $28 or something for a stick. So that was the last time I did that. But it's worth keeping your eye out because there's still plenty of it just knocking around. Like if you go to, you know, garage sales or, or you know, when they're selling stuff off or whatever, you may find, you can get um, 40, 60 and stuff too, but they have less tin. You're best looking for the 50-50. Um, so, but anyway, when I couldn't get the 50-50 bar solder anymore, I actually went to a metal supplies place, um, and they actually had this. This is actually pure tin. See, it says tin there. Uh, these are 500 grams of pure tin. I had to buy $150 worth, but, um, that's enough to ask. There it all is down there. See, I've got stick heaps of it there. So, and as you're only using 2%. Because, um, the main gist of this video is really to uh, get anyone who wants to get into doing some moulding and mixing alloys to um, to be confident in being able to mix them properly. Um, and I'm just using this as an example. But if you follow the the uh, kind of formulas that I'm going to give now, you should be able to mix any proportion of any uh, any two alloys because generally generally it's just tin and lead. Um, I mean, your lead, you may use wheel weights instead, which already has a little bit of tin and antimony. Um, the actual exact amounts are always unknown. 
uh, but it makes harder bullets. But generally, you go either go mix. For example, I'll use uh, wheel weights with two percent lead or uh, tin, sorry, or I use lead with two percent tin. Um, so using these, and then using uh, my tin, I either get pure tin or 50-50 bar solder, and you, you may only be able to find 40-60 bar solder. So, um, so we'll just cover that. So first of all, let's just look at um, using pure tin, like I um, like I showed in this video, making the cadet boards. So using my uh, formula, um, my lead weight um, is 2,880 grams. Uh, my tin, uh, the amount of tin that I want to add, let's just call that X because that's what we're looking for, right? Now we know we want 98%, our final result needs to be 98% lead, 2% tin, um, therefore um, our ratio of lead to tin equals 98 over 2 um, equals 49. Therefore, uh, just using normal uh, maths, we can say that uh, lead, therefore, um, we've got a formula that says our lead equals 49 tin. Therefore, the amount of lead is 49 times the amount of tin. So if lead is 49 uh, times the amount of tin, that means um, our tin, which is X, equals the amount of lead over 49. We know, the amount of, we know our amount of lead is 2,000, so therefore our amount of tin that we have to add is 2880 over 49 which equals 58 points up or other, I think. Uh, 2880 divided by 49. 58.8. 58.8 grams. Alright, so that's how much um, tin I added to my uh, 2880 of, of uh, lead in order to um, get a 2% tin, 2% uh, of tin in the total mixture. Now, if you were using 50-50 bar solder, you gotta remember that the amount of uh, the stuff you put in is um, twice as much as, um, as you would normally, because half of it's gonna be tin, half it's gonna be lead. So it's a bit more of a compli complicated calculation to work that out. But I'll also put that up on the screen because that's what I used to do when I used to have to work this out when I used to use 50-50 bar solder. So I'll put that up on the screen for you so you can work that out. Um, and of course, if you're using 40-60 or whatever, uh, you can still just uh, just change it slightly in order to use that. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that tin now. All right, so we need 58.8 approximately. Obviously, this is not an exact science. You just need to get close as you can. But we're aiming for 58.8 grams of tin to add to... The, oh, it just switched itself off. You've got to be quick with this. We've got 108 grams there. So... Yeah, they, these must be... These, two, these might be 250 grams. These, I thought they were 500. Oh, 330 grams. Well, there you go. <laughs> They're neither. Anyway, that's how much a whole, a whole stick of lead is, uh, tin is. So, um, so what we've got to do is we've got to basically get about half of that. Um, so, so that's what you do. So we want 59 grams, say, that's 108. So half plus a tiny bit more. Now, this stuff's actually a lot... It's kind of harder and more brittle than... Um, than lead, lead sticks. So what you do is you just, I just use a pair of side cutter pliers and cut it as hard as I can, which doesn't go all the way through. 
and then just start cycling it between my hands, which I'm not going to film because I need both hands to do it. Cycling it and eventually it will snap. So I'll just go and do that. Um, quite possibly you'd be able to use a big pair of bolt cutters or something and cut right through this, but this is what I tend to do. So you can see I've actually uh, um, cut that um, part way through. There we go, and I've cut it in half. Um, it's funny, it's it's quite crystalline, as you can see. It makes a kind of crunching sound like you're, like you're trying to break glass or something. Um, and it gets hot. So probably the longer one. So let's see how much that one weighs. Well, that's pretty damn close. 57. Um, if I want to be really pedantic, I can just uh, see if I can do this with one hand. Get my little nippers and nipper tiny bit of uh, tin off. I can't do it with one hand. All right, so. Say you're out in the country or something and the only way that you can easily get tin is uh, through buying solder at the hardware store or wherever, or buying second hand solder. Uh, and probably the most common solder that you can find that is useful for this uh, is the 50-50 bar solder. Now, um, so that's by weight, so it's 50% one, 50% the other. Um, now I'm not sure which is which way to check in a minute, um, but it doesn't matter in this case because they're both the same. So let's say that X is the amount of solder that we need to we need to actually add to our 2880 grams or whatever if you're doing the calculation. So, so therefore the total lead in our pot is going to be 2880 plus 0.5X. So you understand that? So we've got our original lead that I've got for my pure lead, um, rigging lead or whatever. And then we've also got to add the bit of lead that's in the solder, which is 0.5 of the total amount of solder. Okay? Now our ratio is still the same um, of lead to tin is 98 on 2 is 49 so therefore lead equals um, 49 times the amount of tin okay lead equals 49 times the amount of tin now if we know the tin is equal to the amount of solder times 0.5, okay, or, or on 2, same thing, so tin is the amount of solder, it's 0.5x, okay, so therefore we can actually, we can actually substitute this into this, we can say lead equals 49 times 0.5x, okay, so we've just put Instead of 10, we're putting this in here. So the lead equals 49 times 0.5x. So lead equals 49 times 0.5. Is, 26 point something or um, Or 24 point something or other. Yeah. 24.5. So that means in our, in our pot, at the end, the amount of lead in the pot is 24 and a half times the amount of solder that's in there. So our solder is, is that percentage of the lead. Now if we know that the lead also equals 2880 plus 0.5x, because it's the total amount of original lead, pure lead, plus half the amount of solder, we can say 2880 plus 0.5x equals 24.5x. Alright? Now we can, because this is plus 0.5x, we can take, if we take 0.5x from both sides, that'll leave 2880 on this side. 
And if we take 0.5x from 24.5x, it's obviously just equal to 24x, because we've taken half an x off there. So therefore, x equals 2880 over 24 equals 120 grams exactly of solder, of 50-50 bar solder. Alright, now we can we can double check this, we'll go back and check our workings. So 120 grams of solder times 0.5 because there's only half of it is, is um, 10 equals 60 grams of tin. Alright? Um, and so, and we know that our total amount of lead, total amount of alloy, is 2880 plus 120. 2000, so that's exactly 3 kilos, isn't it? Alright, so that works out to be exactly 3,000 grams of, um, of alloy. That we could do 3,000 grams of bullets. We could make 3,000 grams of bullets if we didn't have any wastage. Um, so that's 60 over 3,000 equals 0.02 is equals 2 cent. So therefore we know our answer is correct. Right, so I just have a look on the net and the first number is always 10. So we've got 40, 60, 10 lead solder. Now I, I have seen this here in Australia, um, but apparently there's also other ones. You can actually get 40, 60, which is 40%, 10, 60%. You can get 30, 70. Uh, look on the net, there's all sorts of things. but. Um, but you shouldn't be able to just use this equation as long as you can plug in the correct numbers. So let's just assume we've got some 40, 60, 10 lead. So we'll still make X equals our solder weight. So that's what we're looking for. Right? So, and nothing else has changed really. So 2880 grams of, um, so our total lead is going to be my original lead plus 60% of X, because this solder is the total amount, but only 60% of this lead. Okay, so, so it's going to be 0.6 X. Right? Now, our ratios haven't changed, so therefore lead on tin of our, of our, sorry, tin, um, of our final mixture um, equals 98 on 2 equals 49, so therefore our lead still equals 49 times the amount of tin we've got. Right, now um, our tin, so we look at the tin as the total amount of the solder is 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.6 x. 10 is 0.4x. Alright, so what we can now do is we can solve these two equation, differential equations here. We can say lead equals 49 times this, because the ten, that 10 is this 10, which is 0.46, 0.4x. Um, uh, X, which equals 49 times 0.4. 49 times 0.4, 9.6. So that means the total amount of lead that we're going to end up with is 19.6 times the amount of solder you're adding. Um, so we've still got two equations we can we can do now, so we can go 2880 plus 0.6x, so that's the amount of lead is 2880.6x is going to be equal to 19.6x because that's the same, it equals that. 
So therefore, if we take 0.6x on both sides, that means 2880 equals 19.6x minus 0.6x equals 19x. So therefore, 2000. Uh, so therefore, x, x, which is what we're looking for, is 2880 over 19 equals. Let's see what that works out to be. 2880 divided by 19. 151.6 approximately. 151.6 grams of solar. I would need. So using that amount of lead, same amount of lead that I've got, but if I can only get 50, 40, 60 bar solder, that's all I could find, well then if I add 151.6 grams of solder, I'm going to get the same alloy as, the, as what I'm doing now by adding whatever it was, 58, 59.8, whatever it was. Um, we can just go back and check this. So let's say 151.6 grams of solder times so the total amount of tin is 0.4 equals 151.6 times 0.4 60.6 grams of tin um, and our total amount of, uh, of alloy is going to be 2880 plus 151.6 6 plus 2880 it's 303160, 30316, 0.6 gram. So therefore 60.6 over 30316 equals 101999, which is basically 2%. Um, we, it didn't go to exactly 2% because I, round, well, I, did, I rounded off to one digit a few times and so you're, you're never going to go back and get exactly the same thing. But anyway, so 4060 in this case. So all you need to do is if you've got 4060, just plug in your amount of lead there and nothing else changes. Plug it in there, which will mean that you plug it in there and there. Uh, but you can still use this equation to get the result. All right, so that's a, just a, a brief uh, uh, video about how to uh, mix lead oil alloys. Um, my apologies for all this mess. You might have found it really boring. You might have switched off or fast forward, and I wouldn't blame you. But I just wanted to get something down so if, if someone had some alloys that they were trying to mix and work out how much, they could at least copy these formulas and plug their own figures in. Um, if you're having, if you're doing that, if you've got some lead and alloys and you're trying to mix them and work out how much and you're having trouble, uh, just leave me a, uh, a message down in the comments with what you've got and what you're trying to do uh, and I can probably work it out for you. And um, in the meantime, uh, good luck with uh, mixing your lead alloys and thanks for watching.